So excited to be here uh, for the celebrations. Thank you, family members. Thank you, friends. Uh, you are here for love, for friendship, and for the best wishes. When Michael was born in Beijing, uh, Helen was a college professor, and I was working for the China National Oil Company as a division head. At that time, we thought that the great era of China was before us. Uh, which made us believe our son would have a bright future in China. But the tragedy at the Tianmen Shui was occurred unexpectedly and fundamentally changed our thought of love in China. We spent years thereafter to prepare to leave China and were lucky to be able to send our son here to America before he attended the kindergarten. Looking back, I do not think I can share uh, how many challenges we as a family encountered as immigrants and how thankful we are for the help we received from the family, family relatives, friends and the communities. But I have to say Michael has been really a precautious and talented kid from a very young age. We know he has suffered a lot, but he never complains. Even today, he seems used to only tell us the beautiful side of his life, which really tucked at our heartstrings in many occasions. Mom and I feel ashamed and regretful with a secret anguish whenever we are unable to help due to our position as immigrants in this country. Uh, after making it here, larger than your own, my boy, you are here today. A kind, thoughtful, down to earth and a dedicated young professional. It's an honor to welcome you here and see so many of you travel far, especially from those who fly from Singapore, Malaysia, London, Indonesia and other cities of America to celebrate with us. Time flies. 27 years. <laughs> I can still remember when Lisa was a baby girl. She was very adorable and loved by everyone. Everyone just wanted to carry her, play with her, talk to her, and she brought so much joy to every one of us. And since primary one at the age of seven, she already knew how to go to school by herself, and being a very sensitive girl, knowing that I was busy with work and couldn't make it home for her at times, she would settle her meals and do her own studies. Sometimes when I was faced with challenge in life, she would even wrote some encouraging notes or drawings to cheer me up. She had learned to be very independent at a very young age. 
and I knew it was never easy for her. We have been through many ups and downs together. We laugh together, we cry together, <laughs> and we face life challenges together, like soulmate, more than like mother and daughter. So we are gathered here today on this beautiful rooftop to celebrate the union of Lisa and Michael. On behalf of the Lovebirds, I'd like to welcome and thank each of you for being here, many traveling quite a distance on this very, very special day. So Lisa and I have been friends since we attended law school here in the city. Uh, one summer day in 2015, uh, I think we were at a bar in Soho, she told me she just signed up for online dating, Tinder, uh, and met this guy who was also attending Columbia Law. I didn't think too much of it. I mean, people usually run through a good number of people on these apps before they meet anyone decent. 20, 200, right? So lots of weird guys on these apps, like especially in the city, so you never know what you're gonna get. Turns out, Lisa got lucky, and she developed this deep connection with her first match in the city. And soon enough, she introduced us uh, to Michael. My dearest Lisa, my beautiful bride, in a way, we've come full circle since our first date 50 months and 10 days ago on another New York City rooftop a few avenues away. Um, and in a way, uh, that day was just as momentous because I had finally found you through sheer luck and algorithms and you know, surprise that I found someone who would be my life partner. It's been a pleasure to share this time the past 50 months and 10 days it's been the beginning of an incredible journey with you. Um, in this time, we've already stood by each other uh, through various important stages of our lives, like graduating law school and starting our very challenging careers. Um, and in this time, I have seen you become somebody who is very confident, comfortable in your own skin, um, somebody who has found her voice and her passions. And in these 50 months and 10 days, I've realized a few things about you. I've realized that you are a defender and a protector of your loved ones. You're fierce with your love, and yet you're sweet and delicate at the same time. I've realized that you've become an exceptional lawyer. You've become a fitness guru, nutritionist, keto dieter, interior designer, and most recently a wedding planner. I've realized um, that I, more than anything else, want, at the end of the day, for the hectic lives around us to just slow down a little bit so we have a little bit of time to ourselves so that we can be still in the moment together and so that we could share laughs and stories and tears and so that we could heal what our time apart has taken from us. And I hope that every day, you know, even when one of us gets back late and the other is already falling asleep, we'll find a couple min minutes to be still in the moment together that we have. And I think this is the theme that I keep coming back to, which is the sense that lifetime really might not be enough time for me to love you and cherish you and honor you. Um, and I'm ecstatic that our journey has brought us here today and I'm truly humbled that I get to choose you today, tomorrow, and for the rest of my days. So, you know, they say that when you die, your entire life flashes across your eyes. What they didn't tell you was that when you get married and you have to write your vows, your entire relationship flashes across your eyes. There's a start the day we first met, or I guess the day I saw your profile and thought you were kind of cute, like nerdy cute and nice swipe right, you know, <laughs> the beginning, right? There's the laughter, the tears, the kisses, the birthdays, the anniversaries, the New Year's Eve, the Christmases, everything that we remember and also everything that we forget 
right? The fights, the first time we fought till 5 a.m., and then the angry texts. But then also the times where we said sorry and then everything was okay again. So there, there's so much to say, but there's so little time, right? And as you had said, when we were on the car here from West Village, you said the only thing that's standing between us, right, and drinks at the bar is my 30 minute like speech. I'm kidding, three minutes, I'm good. So then what do I talk about, right? Do I talk about the forces that brought us together? Because like what you said, it's just an algorithm. We were in the same place at the same time, and then we met, and then the rest is history. But I think if memories could be possessions, then the day I met you is one of my most prized possessions that money can never, ever, ever, ever buy. So then, what do I talk about? Do I talk about how I feel like we're so meant to be? Because that is like so cheesy. But it's also kind of true, that's how I feel. So today morning, as I was getting my makeup done, my makeup artist, she looked at me and she said, why are you so tense? And I said, well, I feel like I have to write better vows than Michael, like I just have to win. But then, as she was softly putting on this little glow on my cheeks, she whispered to me, she said, Lisa, you should just speak from your heart. So then, I thought, hey, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna speak from my heart. Because frankly, I've been thinking about it for the past week. Like, what are vows? Like, what do you say, right? I mean, I don't think any of us who have written vows here before who have gotten married like really know what vows are. And I think people who are about to get married or will get married will ever really figure them out. So then, just speak from your heart. And so, this is what I'm going to do today. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to speak from my heart. And so I say the same thing that you say to me, Michael. Is that I choose you. I choose you like how Ash chose Pikachu. Okay, you are my lobster, you are my soup snake, and I hope people here are counting the number of pop culture references I'm making. <laughs> I chose you four years ago on Tinder. I chose you the night when we met on that rooftop bar so many avenues away. And I choose you today, and I will choose you every single day. I will choose you on the day where we have the best memories, when we feel like we're on top of the world, when we feel like we're really successful. But I will choose you in the darkest moments of your life, when you feel like you don't feel confident or when you feel like no one believes in you and even when you don't believe in yourself or when you don't choose yourself, and I will choose you. I will choose you with every single day that I have until the day that I can't choose anymore. And if we're so lucky to spend another lifetime together or 10 more lifetimes together or an infinite universes of lifetimes together, I will still choose you. I choose you in this lifetime, in every dimension and in every single Marvel universe, I will choose you. In the past 15 years that I've known you, oh my god, 15, <laughs> um, we have laughed together, cried together, hated the same people together, <laughs> almost died in a car together. <laughs> Today, I am more than honored to be here with you celebrating the blessed union of you and Michael. I'm so happy that it is Michael that you chose to include in our lives. And Michael, you already know this? but you definitely are one lucky guy to have this beautiful wife. And wherever life may take us in the decades to come, I will always be here for you both. I love you too forever <laughs> and five ever. Thank you. Yeah.
now a woman now, a beautiful bride and a wife to a loving husband. But deep inside my heart, it was always my little girl. Now that I see my daughter marrying such a wonderful, gentle and good-looking man, <laughs> I feel so grateful and I'm sure Michael will protect her, take care of her and support her like what I did. As Leonardo DiCaprio said, as Mel Cobb's in Inception, you're waiting for a train, a train that will take you really far away. You know where you hope this train will take you, but you don't really know for sure. But it doesn't really matter because we'll always be together. And I love you today, and I choose you today, tomorrow, always, and forever. I love you, Michael.